Hi, my name is Pat, and this is my channel, Book Chat with Pat, and I'm glad that you're here. Today is Thursday, May 30th, and I'm going to be doing another episode of Poetry Thursday. Today, I will be focusing on the contemporary American poet Robert Pack on what is almost the first anniversary of his passing. Bob Pack died on June 5th, 2023, at the age of 94. In his lifetime, he published 20 volumes of poetry, with the 21st being published shortly after his death. He also wrote several volumes of literary criticism on Robert Frost, Wallace Stevens, and Shakespeare. Pack was educated at Dartmouth College, where he knew Robert Frost personally, and at Columbia University, where he studied with Lionel Trilling and Mark Van Doren. He earned a Fulbright Fellowship and studied and translated poetry in Italy. When he returned to the U.S., he taught first at the New School for Social Research in New York City and then at Barnard College. He and his family eventually settled in Vermont, where he taught for 34 years at Middlebury College. At Middlebury, Pack started the program in creative writing and taught both English and American literature courses as well. He also taught at Middlebury's graduate school in English, the Breadloaf School of English. Additionally, while at Middlebury, Pack was the director of the esteemed and world-renowned Breadloaf Writers Conference for 24 years, where he brought together many of the biggest names in fiction and in poetry, and where he helped to influence and encourage the efforts of countless aspiring writers. After his retirement from Middlebury College in 1998, he and his wife, Patty, moved to Montana, where their son, Eric, built them a log home with a view of the Swan Mountain Range. Pack came out of retirement in Montana and taught for more than another decade in the Honors College at the University of Montana, where he initiated an interdisciplinary course called Ways of Knowing for first-year students. This course soon became the only required course for students in the Honors College. A nature poet in the tradition of Wordsworth and Frost, Bob Pack has also always considered in his poetry the themes of family and friendship, our responsibility to the natural world, the transience of life, the fragility of happiness, and the consolations offered by nature, art, and music. <clears throat> Pack prided himself on being a mentor to many students and writers throughout his long career. I had the great privilege of working closely with him as both an undergraduate and a graduate student. My appreciation for poetry and my confidence in my ability to read widely and closely came from my studies with Bob Pack in the late 70s and early 80s. In the mid-1980s, he was one of the readers on my master's thesis on the poetry of Wordsworth. There were two college professors that I had who profoundly affected the kind of teacher that I became. Bob Pack was the first. He welcomed every voice in his classroom with great 
enthusiasm. He responded to student writing, both creative writing and analytical writing in response to literature, with keen attention and with warm, positive, and engaged feedback. I learned how to respond to student writing from Bob Pack. So I'd like to share a few of his poems that represent some of the themes that were important in his uh, lifelong career as, as a poet. The first one, Separation, <clears throat> originally appeared in his 1963 collection, Guarded by Women. It was republished in this 1980 volume, Waking to My Name. The collection came out when I was Bob Pack's student. And there's an inscription in the front of the book uh, by him as well. Um, <clears throat> This is separation. Wet midnight grass chills my body with a wakefulness beyond fatigue. Behind me floats a silhouette of trees and before hushed, spaceless in distance, spread to the limits of my vision the horizon of the Adirondack Range. Through the sky, the northern lights, vibrating ghostliness, stream upward toward a central point above my head, which of itself is darkness. A glow appears, a green haze, a falling pause, and then a poverty of words, with which to praise, not merely what I see, but what I feel I see, a poverty of words, to praise the wordless praise itself. These are the thoughts I would write to you, as if the wordless mystery of things was what I sought, as if just talking to you were not at this hour all I wished. <clears throat> the theme of family and relationships among parents and children is reflected in Departing Words to a Son from this 1980 volume. Departing words to a son. We choose to say goodbye against our will. Home will take on stillness when you're gone. Remember us, but don't dwell on the past. Here, wear this watch my father gave to me. Home will take on stillness when you're gone. We'll leave your room as is, at least for now. Here, wear this watch my father gave to me. His face dissolves within the whirling snow. We'll leave your room as is, at least for now. I'll dust the model boats that sail your wall. His face dissolves within the whirling snow. It's hard to picture someone else's life. I'll dust the model boats that sail your wall. Don't lose the watch. The inside is engraved. It's hard to picture someone else's life. Your window's full of icicles again. Don't lose the watch. The inside is engraved. A wedge of geese heads somewhere out of sight. Your window's full of icicles again. Look how the icicles reflect the moon. A wedge of geese heads somewhere out of sight. My father knew the distances we keep. Look 
how the icicles reflect the moon. The moonlight shimmers wave-like on your wall. My father knew the distances we keep. Your mother sometimes cries out in the night. The moonlight shimmers wave-like on your wall. One June, I dove too deep and nearly drowned. Your mother sometimes cries out in the night. She dreams the windy snow has covered her. One June, I dove too deep and nearly drowned. She says she's watched me shudder in my sleep. She dreams the windy snow has covered her. She's heard your lost scream stretch across the snow. She says she's watched me shudder in my sleep. We all conceive the loss of what we love. She's heard your lost scream stretch across the snow. My need for her clenched tighter at your birth. We all conceive the loss of what we love. Our love for you has given this house breath. My need for her clenched tighter at your birth. Stillness deepens pulsing in our veins. Our love for you has given this house breath. Someday you'll pass this watch on to your son. Stillness deepens pulsing in our veins. My father's words still speak out from the watch. Someday you'll pass this watch on to your son, repeating what the goldsmith has etched there. My father's words will speak out from the watch as moonlit icicles drip on your sill, repeating what the goldsmith has etched there. We choose to say goodbye against our will. <clears throat> Another family poem is called Elevated, Thoughts for Pamela. Bob Pack's daughter, Pamela, is an extreme athlete. She is a professional mountain climber, a master of off-width climbing in Montana and Utah. This is a poem that he wrote very late in his life for Pamela. Elevated Thoughts for Pamela. I can recall my father listening intently on his Zenith radio to astronaut John Glenn expounding his political and economic views in soothing cadences. What I like most about this man, my drowsy father said, is that he's really down to earth. My mother was afraid of heights and also is my wife. And so I ask, with such a wary lineage, what mischief in her DNA impelled our daughter to become a rock climber, an off-width specialist who squeezes into a crevice where she vanishes into its shade? But now I see her dangling from the windy heights between the stillness of her being there and the abiding quietude of red streaks and striations in the persevering stone. Down on firm planet Earth, my wife and I share apprehensions that are easy to explain as dread of helplessness. And yet, Without the ecstasy in disciplined suspension of her breath, her almost weightless floating there, perhaps the vast unfathomable uncertainty of parenthood possesses in its dark abysmal depths a mad exhilaration of its own. 
and there, supported by a cam, a steel contravene fastened in a cleavage in the stone, she pauses in the noon hour sun, a wisp on moon emerges from a rushing cloud. In silhouette, a swooping hawk dissolves into a haze that leads to the horizon's pale, hallucinated edge in a serenity incomprehensible beyond the transformations of all accident, beyond the vigil of our fears. <clears throat> I didn't buy all 21 books of poetry that Bob Pack published, uh, but I do have a bunch of them that I would just, that I've collected over the years and that I would just like to show now. The last of his books of poetry was published a few months after his death. His wife, uh, did the publishing. He had completed the, the book just a few days before he died. So the last book is Searching for Home. But other earlier books that I, I purchased after this initial one that I got when I was his student this Waking to My Name, which is actually new and selected poems. So this has poems going all the way back to the, uh, I believe, to the 1950s. The, this was published in 1980, and I think the first collection in here is 1955. Um, <clears throat> but others that I purchased over the years, Minding the Sun, which was published in 1996. That was the year that he retired from Middlebury College and moved to Montana. Um, still here, still now. This was 2008. Most of these are published by the University of Chicago Press. Um, Clayfield Holds On, this was 2015. And then he had a new and selected later poems. Uh, this is a kind of collected works, Event Horizon, which was published in 2021. And I'm going to read just a few more poems that are in this. Uh, this was the final collection published while he was alive. And then, as I said, the last one came out a few months after, after he died. <clears throat> this one um, contains selected works from 1980 through 2021. Um, so I'd like to read... What Would Wind Say? And this came from a volume that I don't have that was published in 2004 called Elk in Winter. Um, this poem, What Would Wind Say, uh, illustrates the theme of loss and the search for something like consolation in the natural world. Very Wordsworthian and, and Frost-like. What would wind say? Gathering grief has settled in my eyes. My body loses its solidity. The lost pass, past like dense shade drifts further still. Where are my hours and days? Where are they now? Now, soon enough, I'll be with you unrecognized. I'll wander down the dust without the ease of wandering. What good to have a life set down in words? I pause at the sharp edge of what is sayable. My friends reach out, but I'm not there. 
My enemies find me invisible. I'm just an oboe played beneath a tree, a flute note faint beyond a stream. If I could find assertion in complaint, who'd listen? If I uttered out a curse, who would take heed? Can reason talk one out of one's despair? Can consolation be called forth and made obedient? I'm glad the circling eagle has no use for me. The raven's raucous cry comes close enough. The deer are curious, but not for long. The bear cubs keep the mother bear in sight. I'm brother to the bobcat and the owl. Is it not totally astonishing that I take notice of myself? For what? What would wild wind or rising water say? Were they too burdened with vain consciousness? I make do with my waking, my making do, and for a moment I forget myself. But then awareness summoned not by me returns of its own brute accord. One thought of you and you are gone again. Again you vanish and now still again what is not there is there as palpable as stone with etched in words for some pale stranger passing by. Your absence is as bright as sunlight on the sea, illuminating the receding depths of air, blue fading into softer blue, as if some random thought of fading blue extended everywhere. <clears throat> and finally, I would like to read a poem entitled Emerald from the 2013 volume To Love That Well. This is a poem that explores the role of memory and family relationships against the backdrop of the natural world, which seems to link generations together, both the living and the departed. This was republished in this final um, collected works, Emerald. <clears throat> Unbidden, a green memory sprang forth so overwhelming in its clarity, it leapt across three quarters of a century. I stood before a countertop of jewelry, eye height, beside my father, who had brought me to that five and dime store in the Bronx. Among the many rings displayed, one gleaming emerald sure there, surpassing all the rest and firmly set within a silver band, it was on sale just for one dollar that my father told the sales lady I'd saved. I bought the ring to give my mother on their wedding anniversary. I can still see her squeeze it on, stretch her thin fingers out that glowing morning to display how perfectly it fit. I marveled at the smoothness of her hands. I live now on a mountainside, the northern country of the evergreens, spruce, cedar, ponderosa pines, tall tamaracks reflecting in a lake that quivers green and greener as rough wind withdraws into the forest shade. From high room, I look out far at darkened green of winter firs whose branches are bent down with snow. And I can see 
pale green in springtime when the softer tips of boughs extend new growth, even dense shadows as the sun descends seem tinted with a greenish hue. Despite accumulated years, I'm green with inexperience. I'm green with envy for the lives I won't have time to live. I'm green, oh, green, oh, in the melodies I hum beneath the intake of my breath. And when I contemplate the purple depths of darkened sky with clouds outlining migratory birds, I know at night my heart will still be green, the green of emerald in the fine shimmer of its crystal light. <clears throat> so that is a little bit about the poet and my mentor, Robert Pack, who died in June of 2023 at the age of 94. He was a great poet, teacher, and mentor. As always, I thank you for watching. I hope that you're doing well. I'll speak with you again soon. Take care.